Hey, my name's Al. Today I have a side-by-side -side ZBrush and Blender sculpting comparison. Before we get there, if you love all things 3D, please subscribe. All right, what is going on? So on the right hand side of the screen, we have Blender and on the left, we have ZBrush. The goal of this was sculpt two things that are similar and just kind of compare and contrast, you know, that good stuff. Now I will say this is not exactly apples to apples. It's not potatoes to potatoes or even oranges to oranges. What we have here is the classic apples to oranges. The reason I say that is one, I am far more proficient with ZBrush. I know where buttons are. I know how to do all most of the things, right? It just comes naturally to me in ZBrush. And in Blender, there's lots of fumbling around still. This is my third sculpt. If you haven't watched the video, linked above. This is just uh, the whole process of me sculpting this Venom bust. The second thing is that when I did the Blender sculpt of Venom, initially it wasn't going to be Venom. It was just going to be this blob monster sitting on a table with a mouth open and slowly it evolved into Venom. So what that means is when I sculpted this in ZBrush, I had a clear, concise path ahead of me. I knew I needed to sculpt a Venom bust. So that definitely would change some of my thought process, some of my uh, decisions in this. So definitely it's apples to oranges, okay? We started off using the snake hook brush with the sphere, just pulling everything down, pulling out the shoulders, opening up the mouth. And honestly, I used much of the same brushes. So in Blender, there is the clay strips. In ZBrush, there is clay buildup. So that's what I used primarily throughout this whole thing. Also the snake hook brush, like I mentioned. I can mask off certain areas, pull out those shoulders, the neck, whatever I need to. Also use the dam standard a lot in ZBrush, and that's comparable to the draw sharp. The overall, much of the same tools. Move brush, the grab brush and blender, uh, move elastic in ZBrush, and elastic deform inside of blender. I think that covers most of it. Now one of the brushes that saved me a ton of time inside of ZBrush was insert mesh brushes. So when I get to the teeth inside of ZBrush, I can create one tooth and then create what's called an insert mesh brush or an IMM brush. And what that allows me to do is make a brush out of that tooth. So then I can just drag on my mesh. I don't really have to adjust it too terribly much. And I can do all these little sub tools, the teeth. In Blender, I wasn't able to do that. Uh, because I don't know how. I don't know if Blender has that functionality. But that would have been much more helpful because in Blender, I created one tooth, I altered the tooth, and then I would duplicate the tooth and then press W, move it into position, all that good stuff. So yeah, that took up a ton of time. The Blender sculpt took me a little over 90 minutes, just the entire sculpting process. And in ZBrush, because one, I am much more proficient in two, like we already talked about. I had a concise vision. Uh, I was able to do that in 60 minutes. So it was much quicker. And you're gonna see I was able to put a ton more detail in my ZBrush sculpt than I was in Blender. So within 60 minutes, I made, in my opinion, a far better sculpt, higher detailed sculpt. But let's talk about some of the details, some of the workflow. So in Blender, I use the remesh function. So control R a lot on whatever subtool I'm working on. And in ZBrush, I did the same thing. I use Sculptures Pro to pull stuff out, use DynaMesh when I need to. And after that, when I needed to, I could project my details onto my lower resolution mesh using ZRemesher and use subdivision levels. So in ZBrush, using subdivision levels would probably be comparable to, uh, what is it called in Blender? the multi, multi-resolution doohickey inside of Blender. But I haven't quite figured that out yet. So I do know it's gonna be more optimized than ZBrush and I instantly could feel it. Even when I was in the multi-million uh, polygon count doing these fine details on the lips inside of ZBrush, it was 100% buttery smooth. In Blender, and I know I'm using the remesh function, as soon as I got to like 200,000 on the body, uh, any higher, any more dense than that, it just couldn't handle it. 
So at one point, you can't see it in the sculpt, I tried this, uh, I think it is multi-resolution inside a blender. It, I just couldn't get it to work. Even when I use like a, just a sphere or a cube, I can use multi-resolution. I probably just don't know how to use it. So I didn't, but there are some differences there. You'll notice differences in the mouth, just some different ideas with the tongue. At this point, you can see me just dragging and dropping that one tooth that I made. And then I can go in individually, kind of rotate scale, re-sculpt on each tooth if I wanted. I love the direction I took this uh, ZBrush Venom. Just like the front of the jaw kind of curled up, kind of felt like uh, Pennywise from It in this newer version. Um, but I, I really enjoy it. I think it's gnarly. I like it a lot. I love where the lips went in side of the ZBrush sculpt with all the details that I did. And the tongue was much easier inside of ZBrush. So with all that said, when we get towards the end of the mesh, I like the direction I took uh, in Blender a little bit better with the holes in the cheek. It actually looks like holes in the cheek in Blender. And then in ZBrush, it doesn't feel like the cheek. It feels just like, I don't know, tendrils or something from the top and bottom of the mouth, which both are cool, but I preferred what I did in, in Blender. So all in all, this was really fun. Someday I would like to do maybe more apples to apples approach to this. So have one piece of concept art that I pick and then sculpt it in Blender and also sculpt it in ZBrush. I think it would be wise to sculpt it in ZBrush first uh, because if I do the same sculpt again the second time, regardless of software, I should be better at it, right? So I'll take that first approach in Blender, or I'm sorry, in ZBrush. That way just to kind of maybe make it more fair. I know it still won't be fair, but it's interesting just solving the same kind of puzzle with two different softwares. So in Blender, I use the Boolean function, and in ZBrush, I didn't for these holes in the cheek or these tendrils coming down. I just used like a mesh that I just stretched out and dynameshed it together in ZBrush, which worked pretty great. Uh, if you have other ideas for me how I can compare ZBrush and Blender, let me know. I, I've really just felt the desire to compare the two software now that I finally got Blender optimized on my Mac. Linked above is how I optimize it if you're interested. But I think there's a huge just idea, especially people who don't have ZBrush, like, do I really need ZBrush? I'm sculpting fine in Blender. What does ZBrush have to offer that Blender is lacking? And I know Blender will get there eventually. Maybe it has insert mesh brushes. That saved me a ton of time, honestly, in this sculpt. But I think I'll put out more content comparing, contrasting Blender to ZBrush since I have both. That way, viewers will be able to say, oh, yes, this is a good point, or no, I actually don't need ZBrush. I think for most people, most hobbyists, there's no reason necessarily to get ZBrush. I would say as soon as you're making money or trying to make money, whether it's sculpting miniatures, production sculpts, whatever you're working, video games, movies, film, that kind of stuff, you're gonna need ZBrush uh, for ease of use. Eventually, once you learn the software, you're able to, in my opinion, work much faster than Blender. Blender's great, especially it's free, so if you're just getting into it, I still think ZBrush Core Mini is much smoother, like Optimize, for the, especially in its trim down. For, for children, that is fantastic. My eight-year-old sculpts, I don't know, he does a lot of sculpting in ZBrush Core. I've had him in Blender and it's just too many buttons, too confusing for him. But Blender, you can do so much more. All right, so as you can see on the screen now, like I said before, I was able to dive a little bit further inside of ZBrush. So I added some room, some better details on the lips, lots of details on the tongue. And I really wanted this dripping saliva down the tongue. So that's what I'm currently working on. Like I said, Blender, I accomplished what I have on the right in 90 minutes. And in ZBrush by the finished product, it was 60 minutes. So what have we learned so far? Maybe nothing, maybe this is just entertaining. I hope you learned something, or at least you can see maybe some different approaches inside of Blender, looking on the left and the right, but I definitely learned some things. So what did I learn? I learned that in regards to sculpting, ZBrush still kicks Blender's butt in every single way. I have yet to find something that Blender does better. So there's that. Uh, Blender is capable, now that I've optimized it, it's definitely capable. I think it's great for the majority of people, 
I enjoy my time more inside of ZBrush and not like totally disregarding what I know about ZBrush and how much knowledge I have in ZBrush. Simply the act of sculpting, the feel of sculpting, the things that I can do inside of ZBrush, it blows Blender out of the water. And like I said before, I'm excited to see Blender grow and continue. I hope they continue to optimize and optimize and try to use whatever magic ZBrush has been using since whatever 2000. This was super enjoyable experience. So thanks for sticking around for this video. I really hope you found it useful. It's kind of fun, uh, entertaining maybe to see ZBrush side by side. If you'd like to see more sculpts like this, like a sculpt done in Blender and then ZBrush and then side by side, let me know in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I will see you next time.